Hello, uh, ECU Street Preacher here. As you've probably guessed, this is not the upper room at my house. I'm still in New Orleans at this point. But I just want to do a quick intro for this uh, video so I can go ahead and uh, go and get it converted um, before I uh, get back so that I can just immediately upload it. For some reason, I can't seem to upload videos when I'm away from home. I don't know what that might be. Uh, like I say, I'm not a techno guy, so I don't really understand those things. But if I can go ahead and get this video done and just upload it as soon as I get home, that'd be great. Um, tonight, well, today is Wednesday. Uh, we had the uh, Catholic Church preach um, this well, kind of like uh, morning to afternoon. We weren't there for a very long time. But um, there's a lot of things I want to share about the um the, the you know this this whole experience of being at mardi gras uh, i will just say right now it was amazing i loved every minute of it and i mean this is what i've been waiting for you know since i started street preaching i can tell you know i guess this makes me radical because um the thought of uh being pelted with uh beads and you know having beer bottles and you know drinks thrown at you and uh, being assaulted sometimes even sexually assaulted several times I lost count but uh, I just I just really loved it and believe it or not I actually had some good conversations with people planted some seeds didn't have anyone to um, uh, you know pray for salvation but I, I really feel like I, I set them on that path and that's usually what we do as street preachers. We just plant seeds, you know. Someone plants, another one waters, and one reaps the harvest. But I, I don't really want to get into all that right now. I just want to get this uh, uh, video going. What you'll see on this video is I got some little snippets here uh, from Monday, and then I got um, a time I preached uh, actually at Mardi Gras. Um, was very very surprised about that but we were out there for a long time and uh, I got a chance to preach at one point so uh, you'll be seeing that on this video and like I say I just don't want to spend a lot of time going into uh, everything that happened but I uh, did want to do like a quick intro for this uh, video and go and get that out there so uh, here's a video hope you enjoy it okay uh, EC Street Preacher here um, here with uh, Lonnie Mathurin uh, and some other brothers, we are against my better judgment. Um, I'm going to be taping tonight. Uh, this is not Mardi Gras. This is uh, the Monday before. This is Lundi Gras. And uh, I'm going to try to tape some of the proceedings tonight uh, using this chest strap. So this is probably, uh, probably the only time you're going to see my face in this video. Um, some of you might like that. Maybe not. But yeah, we're having some, some close fellowship right now. And uh, really had fun with the Sober Conference and uh, uh, came out last night and uh, out there for a good while. Did some really good preaching. Had some uh, had a good crowd of homosexuals that were just dying to scratch my eyes out last night. But uh, luckily, uh, police barricade and. Uh, Few of the more hefty brothers uh, kept that from happening. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. They're talking about praises, re praise reports. Yeah, that'd be great. You know, get some people saved tonight. But anyway, uh, probably going to cut to. Oh yeah, I was talking to us getting out there. Uh, might might just start. You know, if I do some if I do some preaching tonight. But um. Radical Reverend in Utah. Yeah. All right. Well. He was, he, he was See you in a little bit. No, EC Street no, Preacher signing up for now. Okay, just want to give y'all like kind of an opening shot. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how much is showing up on the camera. It's pretty dark back here, but yeah, just to give you an idea of uh, what's going on, we're going to set up here, get all our signs uh, done. I don't, I don't, I don't have you have this kind of pole, so yeah, we we got the. We gotta take some time to figure this out, so uh, signing out for now. I don't know if you can hear my voice. Um, just want to give a shot of what's normally going on. You got all these people walking by. Yeah, this is supposed.
supposed to be kind of a slow night. I don't, I don't see it. I can only imagine what it's going to be like tomorrow. EC Street Preacher signing off for now. I'm not sure. Uh, just want to get a shot of these guys real quick. They accosted me, tried to take the sign away from me. Just want to get a shot of them real quick. Out here preaching the gospel. Hey, look. Homos always get it in the end, okay? Homos always get it in the end. You are going to burn it. I ain't touching your hand. No telling how many diseases you got on that thing. You're going to believe it when you splash in there. You're going to believe it when you splash in there, aren't you? Don't need to quit that sodomy. It's going to kill you, and then you're going straight to hell. The sodomy is going to kill you and then send you to hell. Why don't you look it up in your whatever? Hey, I told you not to touch the sign, didn't I? Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? Okay, you got another one right there. Repent, homo. Repent and turn to the gospel. Hey, can I get a picture with your sign to spread the word? Wicked, wicked, wicked. Wicked homos. Don't I have a right? Don't I have a right to Don't I have a right to freedom of speech? I'm trying to keep you from going to hell. picking up but yeah it's pretty rowdy out here tonight I'm gonna probably keep it on for a few more minutes sometimes those guys come back yeah sometimes they'll come back I mean I thought it was over right then and then that other guy grabs my grabs my pole you know I thought there was a close over yeah yeah we got some good security guys out here too uh, yeah, still rolling. Yeah. 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 yeah, I got him. I got him on camera. Okay, well, I don't see them. If they're going to come back, they probably would have came back. I'm, they probably would have came back by now, so I'm going to sign off for now. Wake up, Marty Ross! Brother Larry. Sin, and you can go to your God and get forgiven? Are you out of your mind? There's a God-keeping record, man. You don't get your sins forgiven with, with the ashes from Sodom and Gomorrah. Wicked as hell. Come on, Mama, where are you taking that young boy? Taking him down to the wickedness of this place? Go the other way and get a good chicken egg. I suppose some of you have to deal with this. You live down here. But you don't have to live down here, I'm sure. Why don't you pray and ask God to deliver you? Deliver you out of sin. Deliver you out of this wicked city. Amen. You raise your children someplace so they don't have to smell and hear and see. Don't you read the Bible? Lot was vexed daily in the things he saw and heard. And you're filling the hearts of your children with wickedness every day. Amen. And I'll bet some of you are on vacation and you're down here. Amen. It's wicked. Wake up before you see your daughter out here as a whore. Your son out here is a sodomite. But you don't want to receive that. Get closer to death. Getting old. Or get right with God. What a shame. 
What are we teaching the little ones today? Grow your hair long and put on silkies. Be the little side of my boy. Little whore. Better go down to the depths of hell. You know, those that do, they lead people into hell on purpose. God's going to judge them double fold, man, maybe triple. You go down to the depths of hell with Lucifer himself, you love him so much. There's levels of hell, folks. There's a deeper hell, and you're looking for it. Go ahead, Mardi Gras. You gotta get out in the sun a little bit today. You gotta get out in the sun a little bit today. But no, you love darkness rather than light. Darkness versus light. Darkness will always lose. That's why you're you're all back in your little cubby holes of darkness. You don't want to see the light. You don't want to hear about the light of God. You the don't truth. Know what the light is. You just want to mock and scoff until you die. And you end up going to hell. I don't know, is there a happy Mardi Gras? Death. Death has never been happy. There's a gay Mardi Gras. Death is never happy. It's always seeking for another one. That grave is not full yet. It's not a respecter of person. It's got every age in it. Wake up, Mardi Gras. Time to party. Where's your next party? Well, you may not have another party. You may not get out of that bed this morning. You might put your shirt on and have an aneurysm, end up on the floor, in the hospital, dead. Standing before God. Wake up before you die, go to hell. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's coming a day when there won't be any gospel preached. That's going to be the wrath of God. Wrath of God poured out on you. And you won't have any options. Today you have some options. The option of receiving Christ as your Savior. But you give up your options. And one day you're going to run out of options. And it's going to be bowing your knee before God. Before He says, depart from me. For I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. You're wicked, you're vile, you're done, and you go to hell. But today, you still got your tits out, you still got everything exposed, but the worms are going to eat it up. And then your soul stands before God. And there'll be no more walking away. There'll be no mocking. Better hurry up and get right with God. Oh, yeah. One day you're going to die. Uh -huh. Die. And you go to hell because you've rejected God's warning. Rejected God's warning. God's playground. I just hit the button, didn't I? I just hit the button, didn't I? Will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're a coward. You're a coward and you're wicked. You're gonna bust hell wide open.
it's illegal to even threaten somebody. Just want to get this guy a tape. He's already threatened to rape me and. Yeah. Thank you for talking to me. Oh, yeah. Appreciate that. You know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? I do. Does he know you? Come on, man. I mean, you're drinking. Jesus doesn't want you to drink, man. Alcohol, that takes 10 years off of your life, man. Why don't you pour it out, man, and we'll pray together, and Jesus will change your life, man. I, I believe that Jesus wants us all to be happy and love each other and have a good time. He doesn't want you to shorten your life with alcohol. I used to be an alcoholic. It almost destroyed me. I've been dry for three years. My apologies. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. I just don't want that to happen to you. You seem like a nice guy. I try to be. I don't, I don't want you to, you know, drink all that alcohol and destroy your liver and, you know, take all those years off of your life. You know, I don't want you to do that. Because I barely got out myself, man. I've seen it. It gets really bad. Well, I don't normally drink, but this is my uh, one time of the year I try to loosen up and have a good time. We well, see, it's not going to stop there. It always, it always starts with one drink, and then you keep drinking, and keep drinking, and keep drinking. And you think you're okay, but you just slip. You just keep slipping down, you know. Take one step toward Jesus, man, and he'll reveal himself to you. Just pour it out, man. Let's pray together. Dishwashers, one, two. Why aren't you doing that? That don't matter. That don't matter. That doesn't Bible save you. That doesn't save you. Don't the Bible say that? You see any rocks? You see any rocks in my hand? Maybe if you had some stones. Maybe, maybe you, maybe if you had the stones to accept Jesus, then maybe you wouldn't be going to hell, would you? You're out here drinking. You're out here lusting after all these whores. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. You are a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. You're going to bust hell wide open. You know that? Just all with all these other hypocrites out here. You ain't got nothing. Bust hell wide open. Bust hell wide open. Just like all the other sinners out here. Don't you see yep. it? Don't you see it? I don't see you it. You see it like the next man do, motherfucker. You Why are you being like so judgmental? Day, Why are you judging me? You see it like every day. You. You. Are you, you judging my judging? You hey, you need to get your woman. Whose woman is it? I'm going to tell you what it is. Whose woman does this belong to? I'm a PK, bitch. I'm a 
my pastor's son, bitch. That I don't save you. you. Fuck. That don't save you. I like that this. does not save I you. It doesn't matter. Nigga. If you've been baptized, if you go to church every Sunday, it does not matter. What are you going to do about Jesus? What are you going to do about Jesus? Why are you calling me the N-word? Can't you see my skin color? Oh, good. What? Fuck you and oh. where are you welcome, you bitch? Black Lives Matter, yeah. How many times have you been outside the abortion clinic? Don't talk about race. Okay. That's what he was saying. Okay, so we got all these women out here uh, dressed like whores. What in the world are you showing your breasts for for a 50 cent, 50 cent necklace of beads? What in the world is up with that? Your soul, your soul is worth a 50 cent necklace of beads? Have you lost your mind? Why don't you take your own advice? So you got all those beads, and let me tell you what, when you go to hell, they're going to burn. They're going to melt when you get to hell. Sin leads to hell, that's all you've got to know. That's all you've got to know. And what are you out here for if it's not the sin? What are you out here for? The Bible says that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. You're putting alcohol into that temple. You are putting cigarette smoke into that temple. You may be putting a, a, a penis or a tongue into that temple. Let me tell you what, that is all sin. That is all sin. Homos burn like faggots. Sin, sin, you're wicked, wicked, wicked. It's time to get right with the God of the Bible. Time to get right with the God of the Bible. Yeah, you're out here, you're angry at the preachers. Oh no, oh no. Please stop that preaching. Oh no. Y'all would, get, y would go, get along real good with Saudi Arabia, North Korea, all these countries that believe that there shouldn't be any freedom of speech at all. You, we've got to be quiet, though. You want to come out here and live for the devil, but somebody comes out here and brings you the truth, tries to get you out of the eternity in hell, and you want them to be quiet? You want them to be quiet? How are you helping anybody out here? You're not helping anybody out here. You're telling them to drink. You're telling them to smoke. You're telling those those women out here to dress up like whores, and then you're telling them to show it, to show you, to show them your breasts. How does that help them? That doesn't help them. That's gonna that's gonna send them to hell. Send them to hell fire. Hell fire. You are gonna burn. You need to get right with the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is the one that you're going to face on Judgment Day. The God of the Bible. You're going to face Him, and He's going to show you tonight when you mocked and scoffed, when somebody tried to bring you the truth. He's going to show you your drunkenness. He's going to show you your sexual sin. He's going to show you your pornography, your masturbation. He's going to show that all to you. His silence, his silence is not approval. He is lining up your sins against you, and he's going to push them at you on Judgment Day. On Judgment Day, you're not going to have some slick lawyer to help you. You're not going to have your boyfriend or your girlfriend to help you, not your mom or dad. No, you are going to stand before God alone, the God of the Bible, and you need to be ready for that. You need to be ready for that. So it's time to put down the booze and pick up the Bible. It's time to put down the bong and pick up the Bible. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Homos always get it in the end. Homos always get it in the end. I can't believe all these sick sodomites out here. Have you lost your mind? Let me tell you what. Homo 
Homos are not born, they're made. Homos are not born, they're made. You take some daddy issues and you mix in a whole lot of masturbation and poof, you get a homosexual. All that's got, all it is is just pornography. Homosexual sin, lesbianism, masturbation, it's all lust. It's all lust. There's no love in it. You say love, love is love? How is this love? Here! Have some HIV! Here! Have some AIDS! Here! Have a prolapsed rectum! How is that love? How is that love? You're going to sit there and sodomize somebody for an orgasm and then they got to wear adult diapers the rest of their life because their colon is leaking? You're sick! You're sick! And you deserve to go to hell. You deserve to go to hell. Sin, sin, sin. So much sin. So much sin. All these women dress like whores. Let me tell you what, are the dishes done? Did you do the laundry? You better hope you got a weak husband. Because I'll tell you what, a godly man wouldn't put up with that. Who's, cook, who's cooking? Who's cleaning? That's where you should be at. You shouldn't be out here dressed up like some kind of whore, showing your breasts for a 50-cent necklace. That is wicked. Is your, is your soul worth that? Is your soul worth a few beads? Have you lost your mind? Sin, sin, sin. Gonna lead you to hell. It's time to get right with the God of the Bible. Time to get right with the God of the Bible. Not that Allah, which is Satan. Not the Hindu religion, which has over three million gods. How do you keep up with three million gods? Is there an app for that? You are going to face the God of the Bible, plain and simple. And He is going to judge you. You should be thankful that someone's judging you now because you're not going to like it when Jesus judges you. You are not going to like it. What I'm doing right now is a Sunday picnic compared to what Jesus is going to do when he shows you everything that you have done and everything that you have said, and he is going to cast you into hell. I serve a God that burns people alive. He burns people alive. He throws them directly into hell. He will burn you alive. And the smoke of your torment will reach up to heaven. And you will burn for eternity. Burn for eternity. Why don't you take your own advice? Take your own advice. Why don't you go home and get right with God? Why don't you go home and get right with God? When you, when you get home and get on your knees and open your mouth, let me tell you what. Why don't you get right with God instead of doing what you've been doing? How many masturbators do we have out there? How, what, what in the world are you masturbating for? All these whores walking around here? You can't find you a whore? You got to go masturbate? What in the world? There's plenty of whores. There's plenty of whores out here. There are a dime a dozen out here. Mike, stop judging me. Stop judging me. You do not get no pussy, man. Shut the fuck up. I'm married. I'm married. She gives me plenty. I do, I do sex the godly way. I do sex the godly way. No sodomy, no masturbation. I do it the right way. And that's why I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I got a, I got a wife that cooks, that cleans, that stays at home that takes care of my children because that's what women are supposed to do. Women need to know their place. They need to know their place. They don't need to be walking around dressed up like a whore. They need to be taking care of the house. 
They need to be taking care of the house. Is it really is it really worth it to dress up like a whore and to go to hell? Is it really worth that? Is your fashion sense worth burning eternally? Is it is that really it? So much sin. So much sin. Control your demon, sir. Control your demon. So of course, yeah, you, you meet anger, you meet anger, but I mean, we're we're this is the most loving thing that we can do. This is the most loving thing that we can do for people. Saving them from an eternity in hell. What is more loving than that? What is more loving than that? And yes, we, I am judging. I am judging. But it'll be bad when you get judged before Jesus, the God of the Bible. That's going to be bad. You don't want to face that. Oh, so much sin out here today. So much sin. All this horse behavior. All this drunkenness. What makes you think that you don't deserve hell? What makes you think that? Well, Jesus loves everybody. Yeah, Jesus loves everybody that's in hell right now. Jesus loves everybody that's in hell. And He will judge you. A loving Savior will one day be a harsh judge. And He is going to judge you. Everything that you've done and everything that you've said, are you ready? Are you ready for judgment? We are giving you the words of life tonight. We are telling you that you can be ready. If you repent, if you repent, accept the atonement that Jesus Christ gave for you. How many people have done for you as much as Jesus Christ has done for you? How many people have took a crown of thorns for you? How many people took a scourging for you? They scourged his back. They plowed it open. The skin from his back was hanging all the way down to his knees. And he was crucified for you. He cr and how do you repay him? How do you repay him? You get drunk. You dress up like a whore. You lust after women. You masturbate. You, you sodomize each other. That's how you repay Jesus for all that He's done for you? That's how you repay Him? You deserve to be judged. You deserve to be thrown into hell. And don't you worry about a thing. Hell enlarges itself for everybody. Hell will enlarge itself to make sure that you get in there. But you don't have to go. You don't have to go. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. It wasn't made for you. All you've got to do is repent. Accept Jesus and live holy. Let me tell you what, what holy living's like. Like nothing you see out here. That's holy living. You've got, to, you've got to stop the alcohol. You've got to stop the drugs. You've got to stop the masturbation. You've got to stop the sodomy. You've got to stop dressing up like a whore. Women need to stay at home and cook and clean like what they were made to do. None of this stuff we have today about equality. Equality. Man's got a role, woman's got a role. And there's too many women out here that aren't doing their role because they're out here instead of at home. Who's washing the dishes? Who's doing the laundry? You need to get, you with, a, you need to get with a real man. Get with a godly man. You want to know what a real man's like? All you got to do is look right here. All you got to do is look right here. This is what a real man looks like. Not these... Uh, Weak need, effeminate sinners that lust after you when you dress up like a whore. Let's not have that. <clears throat> so yes, yes, you are in sin. That's hard to hear. But you can be free from that sin. You can be free. You can give up the alcohol. 
You can give up the sodomy. You can give up dressing up like a whore. You can give it up. That's what grace is all about. Grace is not doing all that you think. It's not a license to sin. You think that you're safe because you're going to repent, but you're already planning on sinning again. So your repentance means nothing. Repentance is to change your mind. And if you're planning on sinning again after you repent, that is not real repentance, and God will not hear your prayer. God will not. The God of the Bible hates sin. The God of the Bible is angry with the wicked every day. That is the God of the Bible. But no, we've got this vision of Jesus as some kind of blonde-haired, blue-eyed hippie that went around talking about love everywhere. Was he loving when he cleared the temple? Was he loving when he talked about... Re That's what we're saying. But you want to think that Jesus accepts everybody. You want to think that Jesus was tolerant. Let me tell you how tolerant Jesus was. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. That's how tolerant he was. So right there, he condemned Muhammad and he condemned all these other false religions. If you want to admit, you can go to Mecca and visit Muhammad's grave. You can go out west and visit Joseph Smith's grave, Charles T. R Charles T. Russell's grave. There are pieces of Buddha all over Asia, but there is a tomb in Jerusalem that is empty. There is a tomb in Jerusalem that is empty. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Rose from the dead. All the other gods, they wouldn't even come down here. They wouldn't even come down here. They want you to think that maybe you could go to heaven if you somehow earned their favor, but Jesus came down to earth. He came down to earth and he died for you. And this is how you repay him. In sin, you deserve hell. You deserve hell. God is going to burn you alive. He is going to burn you alive and burn you forever. Sodomy is sin. Sodomy is sin. Sodomy is a threat to national security. Sodomy is a threat to national security. Look what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. Look what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. Very simple. If you think it's okay to be gay, that is a hate crime. If you think it's okay to be gay, that is a hate crime. Nobody kills more homosexuals than other homosexuals. Nobody. They give each other deadly diseases and then they die early. We're trying to save these homos. We're trying to save these homos. Trying to tell, get them on the straight and narrow. If you're a homo, if you're a lesbian, I know a man that can set you straight. Why don't you take your own advice? I know a man that can set you straight. And his blood is not HIV positive. He can save you. He can turn a homo and a lesbian straight. And he can make a whore close their legs. It's true. It's true. Jesus has the power to save you from sin and to keep you from sinning. That's the God I serve, and that's the God that you're going to face on Judgment Day. It is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Once to die and then the judgment. You are not ready to face judgment if you're walking around here getting drunk, if you're walking around here dressed up like a whore, if you're engaged in sodomy and lesbianism, you are not ready for judgment. Allah is Satan. Islam is nothing but the ramblings of a pedophilic caravan raider, which should have been ignored right when he said them.
You're going to face the God of the Bible, people. You are going to face the God of the Bible. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for judgment? You should be grateful that we're here. You should be thankful that we're here. It means God has not given up on you yet. It means God has not given up on you yet. Jesus is praying to the Father for you. But what do you do? What do you do? After Jesus has done so much for you, you get drunk. You commit sodomy, lesbianism, masturbation, and you walk around dressed like a whore. That's how you repay Jesus. That's how you repay Jesus. She is the strongest woman Oh my goodness, a strong woman? Is that is, is that an oxymoron, a strong woman? Or maybe a woman that stays at home and does what she's supposed to do, like cook and clean. Maybe that would be a strong woman. I'd agree with that. Maybe that would be a strong woman. But no, we got all these we got all these women out here ship their kids off to daycare and walk around dressed like a whore. Worst mothers ever. Worst mothers ever. You should be at home raising those kids. You should be taking care of that house. Instead of trying to wear the pants in the family. And when you're not trying to wear the pants in the family, you walk around dressed like a whore. You call someone to sin. Jesus said it's better to drown than to call someone to sin. But no, you insist on walking around dressed like a whore, having all these uh, sinners lust after you. You insist on doing that. And you will be judged for it. You will face the God of the Bible. How many people even have... When's the last time you read your Bible? You keep saying that we're doing things wrong, but we're doing everything by the Bible. So, what Bible are you reading? Have you even read it? What you've done is you've made for yourself your own God. You made your own God. You made your own Jesus that accepts you no matter what you do. And that is idolatry first and second commandment and you have broken it if you want to go to the new testament we'll do that too first commandment first commandment broken broken how many times have you sinned today every time you sin you get a one-way ticket to hell how many times have you sinned today that's what i thought nobody wants to answer that you know that you've sinned and sinning all your life and you're going to hell for it. And we're trying to tell you how not to go. And yet you get angry at us and you throw things at us. And you curse us out. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you're out here cursing preachers, we already know that you're on your way to hell. By your fruit you shall know them. Yeah. Hell's going to have to enlarge a whole lot to get you into it. Hell's going to have to enlarge a whole lot to get you into it. My goodness. I, 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 I almost believe that she can cook. As fat as she is, I can almost believe that she can cook. The cleaning part, I don't know. The cleaning part, I don't know. But yeah. Hell will enlarge itself for all you sinners out there. It will enlarge itself. It wasn't made for, to be that way, though. You need to get you need to get right with the God of the Bible. You need to get right with the God of the Bible and stop sinning. Stop sinning. Jesus commanded people to stop sinning. You say you love Jesus. You do not love Jesus if you're in sin. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
So if you're out here in sin, you don't love Jesus. You hate Jesus. You absolutely hate Jesus if you're out here sinning. Plain and simple. You want Jesus to love you, repent. Live holy. Accept what He did for you. How many people have done for you what Jesus did for you? Nobody. Nobody. You're around a bunch of sinners that want to use you. Use you for your money. Use you for an orgasm. They just want to use you. And they don't care what happens to you in the process. They don't care about that. They just want their beer money. They just want to sodomize somebody. That's all they want. And once they use you up, they throw you away. But I know a God that says He will never leave you nor forsake you. But you are forsaking Him because of your sin. Your sin. Not that complicated, folks. It's not that complicated. Repent. Repent. Accept what Jesus Christ did for you. Repent, people. Repent. You will face the God of the Bible. All this mocking and scoffing. They did the same thing in the days of Noah, didn't they? They mocked and they scoffed and they got drunk. But what happened to them? They drowned. They drowned. You'd probably prefer that after what Jesus is going to do when he comes back. He's going to burn you with fire. It's not going to be water this time. It's going to be fire next time. God is going to burn you alive. And you will burn forever. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Lesbians go to hell lickety split. And homosexuals always get it in the end. You are on your way to hell. And you deserve it. You're going to dress up like whores. Engage in lesbianism. On your way to hell. Why don't you save that for a lonely night? Save it for a lonely night. Filthy, filthy whores. Filthy whores. Go bust of hell wide open. Filthy whores. Why don't you get right with the God of the Bible? Why don't you get right with the God of the Bible? Instead of doing all these disgusting sexual sins. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. The sodomy. The lesbianism. The masturbation. Pornography makes you stupid. In fact, watching pornography is stupid. And masturbation causes erectile dysfunction. So if you're a homo and you're a masturbator, when you go to the Walgreens and you get the KY, go ahead and grab you some Viagra while you're at it. Because you're going to need it. God is going to curse your genitals for your sexual sin. He's going to curse your genitals for your sexual sin. You're not just sinning against God, you're sinning against your own body. Your own body abhors all this sexual sin. Not that complicated, people. Not that complicated. Get the sin out of your life. Repent. Accept what Jesus Christ did for you. And live holy. Live holy. Get rid of the sin that's trying to kill you. When you sin, you are embracing your murderer with open arms. Because sin's plan is to kill you. Alcohol's plan is to kill you. Lust's purpose is to kill you. And lust is never satisfied. It's never satisfied. You find you some whore to shack up with, you're going to want a different one. After a while, you're going to want to sodomize somebody. And after that, you'll get into the really sick stuff, like bestiality. 
Why don't you save that for a lonely night? Not that complicated, people. Not that complicated. Just get the sin out of your life because you are going to face the God of the Bible. When's the last time you read your Bible? You made yourself up some fairy tale. You made up a fairy tale of a Jesus that loves you no matter what. That loves you no matter what you do. The same Jesus that said, repent or perish. That was the message of Jesus, repent or perish. But you believe that Jesus accepts you no matter what you do. That is a fairy tale. That is a fairy tale. He wasn't some kind of hippie that went around talking about love. If he did, why did they crucify him? Why did they try to throw him off a cliff? You know what he told them? He told them about their sin, and he said, repent. That's why they hated him. That's why they crucified him. That's exactly why. And your sin is going to put you into hell fire, and you deserve it. You absolutely deserve it. You are going to burn alive forever. Let's talk about this fairy tale of Jesus. Let's talk about the real Jesus. The real Jesus talked about hell. He said weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. And he wasn't talking about sodomy. He was talking about hell. Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. He wasn't talking about ripping up, ripping up somebody's anus. He was talking about hell. Flames seven times hotter than here on earth. You think you want to go to hell? Try this little experiment. Douse yourself with gasoline and light a match. And imagine the heat being seven times hotter. That's exactly what hell is like. And all of you are headed straight for hell. You need to get the sin out of your life. You need to get right with the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible. Stop making up for yourself fairy tale gods. Don't follow all these fake gods, all these fake gospels. You need to get right with the God of the Bible because you're going to face him and you're going to face him alone. Your guru's not going to be with you. Your lawyer's not going to be with you. And the man who rips up who rips up your anus isn't going to be with you. Your weak need effeminate husband that lets you dress up like a whore is not going to be with you. You are going to be all alone and you are going to face the God of the Bible. Very simple, people. Very simple. Sin will put you into hell fire. Your drunkenness, your whorish behavior, your masturbation, your homosexuality, all of that. Your pornography is going to put you into hell fire. Hell fire. We're just out here spreading love tonight. We're spreading the love. We're spreading so much love, telling you how to not go to hell. Who in the world has done that for you? Kept you from an eternity in hellfire? Who else would do that for you? So we're out here spreading love. But there needs to be more hate. There needs to be more hate. We need more hate in this city. Hatred of sin. We need people to put down the booze and pick up the Bible. To put down the bong and pick up the Bible. To stop ripping up a, ripping up in someone else's anus and picking up the Bible. That's what we need. We need to stop dressing up like a whore and pick up the Bible. Very simple, people. Very simple. All the answers are there in the Bible. The Bible was written for you. It's God's love letter to you. Shouldn't you read it? Shouldn't you read it? But you don't want to read it because you're children of the devil. He who sins is a child of the devil. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. If, you, if you're in sin, you're a child of the devil. You're serving the devil. 
and people who serve the devil go to hell fire and you will burn 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 let me give you a preview of hellfire ah! Ah! you're gonna burn 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 forever you're gonna burn those of you out there smoking, you're going to be smelling your own smoke. You're going to know what your flesh, you're going to know what your flesh smells like when it burns. Because you're going to smell that smoke and you're going to smell it forever. The smoke of your torment will rise forever when you are in hell fire. sin people if you're in sin you need to stop it if you're a drunk you need to stop it if you're watching pornography you need to stop it if you're dressing up like a whore you need to stop it if you're a woman that doesn't stay at home and cook and clean and take care of children you need to stop that If you're ripping up in somebody's anus, you need to stop that. If you're shoving your tongue into some woman's vagina, you need to stop that. Oh, very simple, people. Oh, very simple. Just quit your sin, live holy, accept what Jesus has done for you. Who has done for you what Jesus has done for you? Nobody. You're around a bunch of sinners that want to use you. You're around a bunch of sinners that want to use you. Use you so they can have their beer money. Use your anus for their sodomy. That's what they want to do. And once they use you up, they're going to throw you away. Very simple. Very simple, people. Stop your drunkenness, stop your whorish behavior, stop your pornography, stop your sodomy, stop it, just stop it. That's a good idea, isn't that? Sin is what's trying to kill you. When you sin, you are welcoming your murderer with open arms, because that is the purpose of sin, is to destroy you and to throw you in the hellfire. You are going to be judged by the God of the Bible. So when's the last time you read your Bible? You will read the Bible, so we're coming out here to tell you. We're coming out here to tell you. And what a message of love this is. What a message of love this is. Um, you ready for a break? Yeah, I'm ready for a break. Switch with this guy. Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. Sign out for now.